813-239-9663. You can also email us at dj at wmnf.org. And joining me now in the studio is Hassan Shibley. He's executive director of the Tampa chapter of the Council on American Islamic Relations, or CARE. Welcome to The Last Call, Hassan. Hey, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, thanks so much for joining us. And so let's begin with last night's attack on the U.S. Embassy in Benghazi, Libya. Four Americans have, been, have, have died, including the ambassador to Lib Libya, Christopher Stevens. And there were riots by Libyans upset at, at a low-budget film critical of Islam. Um, why don't you start by telling our listeners what you know about this film? I mean, to be honest, uh, not too much. I haven't seen it. All I know is what I've heard about those that have seen it, that it is a disgusting... Uh, uh, just a disgusting, uh, intolerant attack on the Muslim community, on the Prophet Muhammad, and on the Muslim people as a whole. But nonetheless, that never justifies the even more disgusting response that we saw from a small minority of extremists in the Middle East. So you might be talking about, certainly about what happened in Benghazi, Libya, but also there was a, there was a kind of an attack on the embassy in Egypt where they stormed, some people stormed the embassy, they tore down the American flag, they replaced it with a black flag. What is that black flag that they were putting up? You know, I think the Egyptian people, you know, felt that they were being humiliated and dishonored by that film. And as a result of that, they wanted to show that, no, we will not let the flag of hatred, the flag of uh, bigotry uh, rule over uh, the, our, our identity as Muslims. So they put up a flag that had the Muslim creed that there's only one guide and Muhammad is his messenger. And they rose that flag up high to show that um, you know, we will not let these insults go higher than our culture and our identity. Uh, you know, that was sort of a, a protest, but again, it, no matter how disgusting the film is, no matter how much it attacks the Muslim identity or the Egyptian people, it doesn't justify the disgusting uh, violent attacks. And keep in mind that the, uh, you know, protesters were about 3,000 uh, in, in a Muslim world that consists of 1.5 billion Muslims. So they certainly did not speak uh, for the majority of Muslims in their violent response. Sure, many Muslims were offended, many Muslims were hurt, Many Muslims were sad to see the just the baseless, disgusting uh, attacks on the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, but it certainly does not justify such a violent response. And I think in Egypt, there wasn't the same level of violence as there was in Benghazi. I don't know, was, it, was anyone injured in, in Egypt? Not that I know of, and really, I, I, I'm very skeptical that the attack in, uh, in Benghazi was a result of the film. I mean, with that kind of sophisticated attack, especially the fact that they knew where the ambassador was when nobody knew it was confidential and top secret, uh, shows that it was pre-planned. I don't think it had much to do with the film. I think it's very premature. It's too early to tell who was behind the attack, but it's disgusting nonetheless. Yeah, that's been a, a theme that's kind of emerging as the day goes on, that that the Benghazi attack seems a little bit strange for just a mob of, of people angry at a film. And in fact, our own senator, senior senator in Florida, Bill Nelson, a Democrat, has suggested that this, this attack was actually coordinated by Al-Qaeda. Let's go right now to a, a clip, a short clip from Bill Nelson about what he thinks might have happened in Benghazi. So this is, this is 45 seconds, and then we can come back and talk okay. about this. Uh, also, what, uh, everything's okay. Everything's really good, yeah. Okay, good. Um, I'm going to read a little bit from The Wire about, like, that it was maybe a coordinated attack by yeah, terrorists, yeah. And, and then we can just continue. And we don't even know if it was anti-Muslim, or it could have been pro-Gaddafi support. We don't know. Yeah, you know, can say things like that. And we also have a whole bunch of people on the line, so we'll go to the, we'll go to the phone soon as well. Oh, I'm sure it'll be hot. They're not going to hang out. Yeah. First, we are going to Is Zebulon first? Danny's first. I'm asking our Senate Intelligence Committee to investigate what role Al Qaeda or its affiliates may have played in these attacks in Libya. And that was U.S. Senator Bill Nelson. He is uh, saying that maybe that it should be investigated whether this was an Al Qaeda attack. Uh, someone else in the Obama administration is saying that the administration is investigating whether the assault on the U.S. consulate in Libya was a planned terrorist strike to mark the anniversary of the 9-11 attacks and not a spontaneous mob enraged over an anti-Islam YouTube video. The condition, the official rather, spoke on condition of anonymity because he was not authorized to discuss the incident publicly. Um, so, Hassan Shibley with the Tampa chapter of CARE, what are your thoughts about if this was a planned attack rather than just a spontaneous attack, uh, well, first of all, what are the what's the evidence for that? What type of weapons were used, and 
who could it have been? Who might it have been? I think one of the uh, strongest pieces of evidence is just the fact that they knew where to find uh, Chris Stevens, who died as a hero for our nation. You know, and that's what really bothered me the most. A lot of people were asking, well, Hassan, doesn't this bother you because it undermines your efforts of promoting uh, a positive image of Islam? I said, no. First and foremost, it hurts me and bothers me because America lost a great hero who was serving our nation, serving the Libyan people. And what's amazing to me is if you go online to the Libyan Revolution website and on Facebook, you will actually, actually see the Libyans holding posters saying Chris was a friend, was a hero. We stand with him and his family. Oh, we are horrified by what happened and we apologize to the American people for this senseless, disgusting act of violence that did not represent us. You know, th that, those people who committed that disgusting act of violence, they represent Islam uh, no more than Christ uh, Anders Brevik, who killed 80 children in Norway, represented Christianity. Well, we have a lot of people hanging out on the phone line, so why don't we go right now to the phones. Uh, Danny in Tampa. Hi, Danny. Uh, I'll forgive you this time. All right, thank you for that call, Danny. Thanks for getting things kick-started. And the, the Israeli connection here is, is co also coming under question today. Let me read a little bit from the AP. Um, the man who says he directed and wrote the, this film, or if you want to call it that, has little or no record of existing, has made other claims that appear false, and says he's gone into hiding. He identified himself in a telephone interview with the Associated Press as Sam Basil. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, B-A-C-I-L-E. He said he was an Israeli-born Jewish writer and the director of Innocence of Muslims. Basile was the name used to publish excerpts of the movie online as early as July 2nd, but his background came under growing doubt today. A Christian activist who said he was a consultant on the film told The Atlantic that Basile was a pseudonym and that the man was not Jewish or Israeli. Israeli officials said there was no record of him, him being a citizen. So this is, um, you know, it's getting fishier and fishier as the day goes on. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of unknowns. Again, we don't know who's behind the film, what their intention was. Uh, we don't know who was behind the attacks, frankly, and what their motivation was. But what we do know is regardless of who was behind it and what their intention or motivation was, it's never justifiable. We cannot let the extremists control the dialogue. We cannot let the extremists set the agenda. Uh, Arab, uh, moderate Arabs, moderate Americans, moderate Muslims, moderate Christians, we have to stand united and not let the extremists divide us and not let the extremists speak for us. Well, let's go back to the phone since we have so many callers. If you'd like to join the conversation, it's 813-239-9663 or dj at wmnf.org. Zebulon in Tampa, you're on the air. Hi. Uh, I just wanted to say that I really feel like uh, there's a complete misunderstanding of Islam in the West, which people say has existed for a long time, but it's been sort of preyed upon by opportunistic politicians to advance agendas, and that's created even a greater misunderstanding of Islam in the West. The best place that I can think of to show mutual tolerance between Muslims and Christians is Ethiopia. Um, historically, Ethiopia was a place where the dark-skinned followers of Muhammad, when um, the Muslims Stand by for moved our mics. from yeah. Mecca Don't to Medina, who knew that they would be made Stand slaves by. when they reached Medina, objected to the Prophet Muhammad. They said, we don't want to go to Medina. And he told them to go to Abyssinia or Ethiopia and to Do you want to, to respond to this? The king of Ethiopia, or should we just maybe move on? Because I don't know. Since then, Ethiopia has had a sizable Muslim population. 
population. Now, recently, I can see something churches quickly. in Ethiopia what? were I can see burned something quickly. by yeah, sure. Al-Qaeda or Al-Shabaab, I'm not sure which one. And the people who rebuilt the churches for the Christians in Ethiopia were Ethiopian Muslims because they felt like, you know, these people said that they were Muslims who burned these churches down. And to prove that we are true Muslims, it's, it's our responsibility to rebuild these churches because if some so-called Christian burned down our mosque, we would expect Christians to, to help us rebuild our mosque, and, and they would. I mean, there's been a history of that kind of cooperation in Ethiopia. Now, unfortunately, a lot of foreign influence is creeping in there to create the same kinds of schisms that you see here in the West. And all I would say is that if a religion leads you to love and mutual tolerance, then it's a true religion regardless of what religion it is. If, if that religion leads you to uh, hatred and war, then it's not a true religion. And the problem is not the religion, it's the person espousing the religion. Choose religion as a cloak to hide shameful deeds or to so-called justify shameful deeds against other human beings. And I would like to just say, I extend the hand of brotherhood to all Muslims, all Hindus, all Jews, anyone who, even atheists, whatever. We're all human beings, bottom line, and we should respect each other. That's all I want. Thanks for that call, Zebulon. Hassan, would you Thanks. like to respond? Thank you, brother. You know, we extend that hand back. And you brought up some very important points. I think people forget that the first people to offer shelter to the Muslims, when Muslims first started following the Prophet Muhammad and were being oppressed by the polytheists in Mecca because they rejected the idols, because they brought up ideas that white and black people were equal, that rich and poor were equal, uh, that women should not be killed and buried alive as the polytheists used to do. The first people to offer sanctuary to the Muslims were the Christians of Ethiopia. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, never for, uh, uh, forgot that. And historically, uh, the Islamic Empire always treated the Christian minorities, the Jewish minorities, with the utmost respect. There have been some uh, dirty spots in the history, but overall, as the Pope uh, John Paul II said, that uh, Islam has been very tolerant of Christianity, much more than Christianity has been tolerant of Islam. That's the uh, late Pope John Paul II. And the reason it's good to look at these historic examples is it shows that we can uh, coexist peacefully and grow together as a civilization, and that our religious differences need not make us fear and hate each other. And you're right, there are a lot of hate profiteers that are making a lot of money promoting fear and hatred of minorities and even using those kind of platforms as we saw here in Tampa uh, to get elected. And that's very shameful and it's destructive to us as a society and as human beings. 813-239-9663 or dj at wmnf.org. That was the voice of Hassan Shibley. He's executive director of the Tampa chapter of CARE. And I wanna read an email that came in from David in cyberspace. David is talking about Terry Jones, the Gainesville pastor. He says, Terry Jones is an awful man and wants nothing more than to incite war. I think he shouldn't even be referred to as pastor or reverend because he's not living up to Christian ideals. Jesus was a peaceful man who promoted pacifism and would consider Jones a heathen of the worst kind is what David says in cyberspace. And while I'm on the email, email that reminds me that uh, to tell you about a traffic situation in Palm Harbor that that I didn't tell you about at the beginning of the show. US 19 is closed in both directions in Palm Harbor. I'm pulling up the details right now. Um, there's a gas leak and, sorry about the delay. There's a gas leak. All lanes are blocked from Nebraska to Alderman Road in Palm Harbor. So uh, be aware of that area. If you can avoid it, please do. 813-239-9663. Let's go now to Charles in Tampa. Hi, Charles. You know, the prophet, and the sad thing is it does go on, but it does, it's, what's also troubling is when we tend to blame an entire faith, an entire people for those criminal acts of a few, as, uh, as Terry Jones does. Again, these disgusting acts are never justifiable, uh, but nonetheless, it's, we can't go to the other extreme and then blame another group, as Terry Jones does. You know, the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, whoever, whoever harms a person of another faith that lives with the Muslim people, 
that I, Muhammad, will be a witness and an advocate against that Muslim on behalf of the uh, non-Muslim that he harmed. So the Prophet Muhammad made it very clear that one of the greatest sins is to harm one of your fellow co uh, 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 interfaith uh, religionist um, that's seeking your protection or that lives with you. 813-239-9663 or dj at wmnf.org if you'd like to join this conversation. We're speaking with Hassan Shibli, Executive Director of the Tampa Chapter of the Council on American Islamic Relations. It's 548 in the afternoon and we're going to go to, oh, David just dropped off. All right, caller, you're, caller, you're on the air. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hi, Simon. Hi, Simon. Are you there? Yes. Yeah, you're on the air. Can you go ahead, please? Very good. This is Simon from Michael. You um, are do you know talking to the, the discussion of Al Qaeda. Sorry, man. Do you know Simon? I don't know. He's uh, a. <laughs> he ain't right now. <laughs> and he wants to go there with you. Don't take the bait. And also, the, the ordering of the assassination of Ambassador Cole by Yasser Arafat, or as your guests would know, Abu Ammar was his name. He was the ambassador uh, in Khartoum. And so there have been other instances where there was no provocation of any type of insult towards the religion. It was a political um, assassination on those uh, two instances. But if, if one wants to consider the grievances and the objections and the criticisms and sensitivities, you know, you're going to have to reserve and look at the balance sheet of tolerance with Islam. I mean, let's not forget the bombing of the Bamiyan statues that were there for 2,000 years that the Hindus had, that the Taliban bombed, that the world asked them not to come down those statues. Uh, or the, in Egypt, the two most popular books read for the cause of the elders of Zion, or Minecraft. So we need to have a discussion. We need to have a discussion about tolerance of all religions. All right, thank you, Simon. I think that's the kind of the discussion we are having. What do you think about those 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 examples that he brought up, the books that people read in Egypt, and then the Taliban destroying those statues? Absolutely, and that's why it's critical that mainstream Muslims, mainstream Christians, again, mainstream Arabs, mainstream uh, stream, um, people of all faiths and ethnicities work together against the extremist minority, and they are a minority. I mean, somebody could easily go and say, look at America in the past month. We've had so many uh, mosques firebombed. We've had so many mosques burned down. We've had nine Sikhs brutally shot down because some white extremists thought they were Muslim. We had so many moviegoers also murdered while they're watching a film. But, you know, but, and, and say that America is a bad place because of that. And that's just crazy. You cannot blame a nation of 300 million people because the criminal acts of a few dozen or a few hundred or even a few thousand. Same way we can't blame the entire faith and the entire religion because of the criminal acts of a few hundred or a few thousand. They don't even equal a percent of a percent. And us mainstream people have to stand united against extremists from all sides. Thank you for that call, Simon. I'm going to go back to the emails now. Lloyd says, anyone that believes the Israeli government is an ally of the USA is sadly deluded. Time and again, their policies toward the Palestinians have proven that they are the problem in the Middle East, not the solution to them. Slightly off topic from Lloyd in Lakeland, but thank you for that email. You can email us at dj at wmnf.org. You can also give us a call at 813-239-9663. Let's go now to John in Tampa. Hi, John. You're on the air. on all sides, and it's great to uh, be on a radio show where, you know, again, we're reaffirming that, uh, you know, the voice of a few hateful people just don't represent. I just wanted to make a comment that came up in the Democratic National Convention. Pretty interesting how a friend of peace of Jerusalem keeps coming up in this political measure. It's something that gets repeated a lot in uh, Christian, uh, you know, discussions. Christian churches here in the United States. Um, but a lot of people are taking that uh, praying for peace, for the peace of Jerusalem, seems to be, uh, you know, referring to, uh, you know, the capital of Israel to go to Jerusalem. I just come back from the Middle East, and in no place have I seen uh, apartheid as I do see in occupied territories and in areas, you know, right around Jerusalem. 
um, you know, make no mistake, uh, praying for the peace of Jerusalem is being mistaken as in, you know, making sure that Israel 